Welcome to the Sacred Roots Podcast. I am your host, Elie de Bosson, and I am a spiritual teacher, business mentor, energy healer, speaker, and the author of the new book, The Path of Femininity, The Six Gifts of Your Sovereignty. This show is designed for every woman entrepreneur wanting to experience more flow, abundance, purpose, and impact, all while having a solid business and life. I love and adore to bridge spirituality and business, so if you're into both of these, welcome! You're at the right place. Welcome, my darling, to a new episode of the Sacred Roots Podcast. I'm so happy that we're spending this quality time together today. Quality time is my love language. So I'm here to give you all my love, all my knowledge, all my expertise today about how feminine energy and money energy are very, very intertwined. But before we dive deep into this amazing episode, I have a special announcement to make for you. Next week on the 25th of January, I am going to give an amazing workshop, which is called The Energy of Money. During this workshop, I'm going to share with you the seven principles of money. It's really a spiritual approach to money so that you can really shift your perspective on money, let go of the blocks that are preventing you from receiving all the money that you desire and manifest the money that you desire, and really set you up for an abundant and wealthy 2022. At the end of the workshop, I'm also going to do a light language transmission and activation to align you to more wealth. So I'm very excited. This is going to be super fun. And if you want to sign up, well, of course, you can have a look at the show notes of this episode because there is a link to sign up for this amazing workshop. So block it into your calendar. It's next Tuesday, 25th of January. And if you can't join live, of course, there's going to be the replay. All right, now let's dive into this beautiful episode. Why being in your feminine energy is connected to money? Hmm. Well, first of all, we need to understand, and if you're listening to this episode, you probably know by now that Feminine energy is all about receiving, whereas the masculine is more about giving. So when you are in your feminine, technically, you should be receiving much more, right? So it's very important for a woman entrepreneur to understand that whereas you need masculine energy and you need to be doing and taking action and moving forward and having a bit of structure for your business to thrive, you also need to move back into your feminine every once in a while so that you can receive the fruit of your labor. If you're always in your masculine, if you're always doing and hustling and, you know, taking action to reach your goals, you're actually pushing these goals further away. It is by doing less and being more that you receive because being is feminine energy. And when you are in your feminine energy, you are allowing the universe, your clients and opportunities to take the masculine role, to take action and then to sign up for your group programs, your podcast, purchase your courses, your books, whatever it is that you're offering the world. So it's very important for all women, but particularly for women entrepreneurs to really create space in their days so that they can move back into their feminine, so that you can move back into your feminine every once in a while. Because it's when you're in your feminine that your clients show up. You know, I always laugh when people talk about the dream of, you know, being on the beach on holiday, sipping a nice cocktail, and then having money randomly fall on your bank account. Well, it's not random at all. <laughs> When you understand the spiritual laws of the universe and when you understand how energy works and how money moves, it makes total sense that it's when you're slowing down, it's when you're being, having fun, having pleasure, that you open yourself to receiving all the abundance that wants to come in your life. So now you're not going to spend your life on a beach sipping cocktails because otherwise your bank account might be end up at zero. <laughs> 
you also need to take action and put your offers out there and, you know, be visible in order to attract your clients. But it's all about finding the right balance. The truth is that I could have called this podcast Secret Union to have more abundance or to be making more money, which is definitely true. When you are in sacred union between your masculine and your feminine, it automatically activates prosperity for you. The reason why I'm saying being in your feminine calls in more money, it's because we live in a world that is so masculine. And if we did things just the way we were taught to do them, we wouldn't be aware that there is a whole other way of living. There's a whole other way of leading your business, which is the feminine way. And so I'm putting the emphasis on that feminine energy because when you are in that feminine energy, that's when you receive. That's when your clients can show up. That's when money can come to you. That's when you're magnetic. So now you might be thinking, okay, well, how do I actually move in my feminine. Like this is beautiful theory, but now what does it mean concretely for my everyday life? Well, feminine activities are activities where you just are. I think, you know, there's a bit of a misunderstanding sometimes about what we're actually doing when we're in feminine. I was talking on a podcast interview with someone that I was interviewing me and they were saying, that they had been told that cooking was a feminine activity. And so they were cooking to take care of their feminine energy. And I was, you know, given the hard task to disappoint them because cooking is not a feminine energy. That's such a stereotype, you know. We think that taking care of the house and cooking and all these things are feminine. No, because you're still doing, you're still nurturing, you're cooking for your family, you're cooking for your partner, that's actually still masculine. That's still doing. Being in your feminine is an energy that is much more inward. Being in your feminine means that you're going to reflect on your day. So for example, you're going to create space in the middle of your day to just have a break, sit down, maybe do some breath work exercise, maybe meditate, a journal, and reflect on your day or reflect on your week or reflect on your month and ask yourself, what went well during this month? What didn't go really well? What do I want to change? How can I make things better for myself? How can I be more connected to my intuition? When you're asking yourself all these questions and you're really going inward and reflecting about your life, your business, your desires, your vision, that's when you're in your feminine. So you could argue, well, I'm still doing things. Yes, for sure. But they are not actions that are, you know, focused on the outside world. They are actions that are focused on the inside world. And that is the difference between the feminine and the masculine. Something else that is really connecting you with your feminine energy, it's being creative. It's playing around, dancing, singing, writing songs, playing with the snow that's outside. If you have snow in your garden right now, I'm saying snow because I'm looking out of the window and it's all snowy here in in BC. But maybe you're listening to this and it's the summer and so you want to go play outside and put your feet in the ground, really connect to the earth. The earth is feminine energy. So the more you connect to the earth, the more you connect to her magnetism and slow down, the more you're going to increase your own feminine energy. So feminine energy is really about being, slowing down, going inwards. Something that is also very feminine is to take care of your emotions. We are so bad in our society today at listening to our emotions. We're going to be angry and suppress that anger. We're going to be sad, but not want to take the time to cry because it's uncomfortable, right? It's not really fun to be angry and to be sad and to process these emotions. I mean, I feel you, I've been there and I created a whole method, the self-healing spiral to help women welcome their emotions and heal from trauma. So I know how hard it is, but when you do that, when you really honor your emotions and really listen to the sacred message that they have for you, you really are in your feminine energy. So if you have a business and you're super busy and you just had a crazy day with lots of appointments, podcast interviews, um, working with your clients, coaching them, talking with your team, you know, you've been in your masculine 
your whole day basically. And make sure to have, I would say, one hour minimum to two, ideally three hours in the afternoon or at the end of your day where you can cultivate your feminine energy, where you can bring yourself back to that feminine energy, where you can have a bath and read a book, where you can reflect on your day, like I suggested before, where you can meditate, where you can move, doing some yoga, for example, or going for a walk. That's very feminine energy as well. Just find, I don't want to say activities because then you're going to feel like you're doing, but find moments where you can bring your focus inwards and really connect with yourself because that's when you're going to receive. Something else that is very important to understand is how feminine energy and money energy are very intertwined because they are both connected to your sexual energy. So sexual energy, creative energy, desire energy, these are all synonyms. These actually all mean the same and they also mean money. Hear me out. The feminine is very connected to her desires. When you are in your feminine and you go inwards, You can have these desires that really turn you on and that activate you and, you know, you're in your bath and suddenly you want to get out of your bath and take action because you get all excited. That's when your feminine is really aligned to your masculine and pushing your masculine to then take action because the desire is very aligned and is really coming from your soul. Your feminine is actually supposed to lead with these desires. So it's super important, again, to spend time in your feminine energy to really be connected to desires of your soul. And these desires are then going to allow you to create, to create the life that you desire, to create projects. Think about it. Feminine energy is that part of you that births babies, but also ideas. It's the part of you that creates. And sexual energy, we make love in order to have pleasure for sure, but also in order to create. So sexual energy, creative energy, these are all synonyms. And the yogi knew about it for a very long time because they call it the kundalini energy. And then kundalini energy is located in the first chakra, in your muladhara, which is really at the um, base of your spine. And when that energy is activated, it goes all up in your body and it makes you move. It makes you want to take action. And it can go all the way up to the seventh chakra and it can help you have downloads and visions and really be super connected to your soul to receive sacred guidance for your life or your business. So that sexual energy is really, really powerful because it creates lives, projects, businesses. And if you have a business and you're listening to this, I'm sure you have a lot of sexual energy, a lot of creative energy that is driving you to build your business and to serve others with it. Now, you might be understanding how sexual and creative energy are connected, but maybe not having exact clarity on how that connects with money. Well, two things. First, Money helps you to create. Money is just a tool. Money, when you have it and you use it wisely, it helps you create quality time with your loved ones. Invest more money in your business so that you can create a podcast or publish a book. You know, it costs money to publish a book. So you need that money in order to be able to do these things. Money is just a bridge from an idea to bringing that into the matter. It's the creative process. It's what is allowing you to birth something. Money creates. Money is creative. Can you see that? Now, the second thing, how money really is connected to sexual energy. Well, sex is all about relationships, desire, connection right? Money is all about relationships, desire, and creating connection with others. People who usually have fear around money, very deep down, it's always a fear of 
lacking connection or fear of breaking a connection with someone. Money is very, very connected to your relationships and your connection to others. Again, money comes from source, you know, through people that are giving you that money. Money is actually coming directly from the divine, but it's just using people and situations to come to you, right? Well, sex is your direct access to source. When you have sacred practices, when you really make love with intention and in a very sacred way, you can have very powerful spiritual experiences that give you direct access to source, much faster than when you meditate for hours. <laughs> And you get that access to source through the person you're making love with, right? Now, sex creates a life, potentially. Sexual energy is creative energy, like I already explained. And money allows you to create the life that you desire as well. In order to have sex, you need to open yourself. You need to surrender, especially as women, we are receiving in order to have money. You need to open yourself to receiving the money that's coming your way. You need to surrender. You need to move into your feminine. Sexuality feels expensive. So does money. Sexuality gives you access to your power. And money is power in a certain way. So you see, money and sex are really the same energy. They're the two sides of the same coin. And so the more you honor your sexual energy, the more you can welcome money into your life. This is why I've been saying and writing and explaining on social media and in a lot of podcast interviews that as long as you have not explored and fully understood your feminine underworld sexual creative desire energy, you cannot really manifest your life and the things that you desire cannot really manifest into your life because you really need to have explored all that, understood all that, embodied your sexuality, your sensuality, your desires, your creative power in order to manifest the life that you desire. And yeah, it's so important to actually be connected to your feminine energy, which is sexual and creative energy to be able to become wealthy. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to let that sink in. I don't want to like give you too much information today. I think this was already a lot today and it really gave you a new perspective of how being in your feminine energy can really help you make much more money. But my invitation for you would be to now grab a pen, a piece of paper, a glass of water, and really sit with the next three questions that I'm going to give you. How are money and sexuality related in your life? Can you find any links? Maybe it happened to you that you were having a very intimate moment with your partner, and then after that... Maybe 30 minutes later or an hour later, you turned on your phone or checked your email and you saw that you had a new client. And maybe that client actually signed up right at the perfect moment where you were having fun. <laughs> well, full honesty, it's happened to me not only once, and I know it's also happened to other people. So like I've observed it in my life, but I want you to observe that in your life as well. Don't just take my word for it. Observe how they are related. Observe how they impact each other. And second question, how can you improve the flow of energy in your sexual and in your financial life? That's a hard one. How can you improve the flow of energy in your sexual and financial life? How can you make sexuality more playful? You know, if you don't have a partner, it can be with yourself, absolutely. You don't always need someone to awaken that energy within you. How can you also create more flow in your financial life? How can you, you know, let go of the fears that are blocking the money to come in and to come out? 
And a third question that I would like to ask you is, where are you experiencing shame? Because sexuality is bringing up a lot of shame for a lot of women. You know, we have all been criticized because we were dancing and having fun, but we were a bit too sexy. And so then we were shamed for it. So it brought up shame. And if that didn't happen to you, it definitely happened to your friends or to your mothers or to you in a past life. I mean, sexuality and shame are very connected. So where are you experiencing shame? And how could you release that shame? Because it is time. It's time to release that shame that is just preventing you from showing up in your full authenticity, in your full sensuality, so that you can magnetize all the money that is wanting to come into your life. These are three powerful questions. Don't undermine them. Take the time to sit with them. And I would love to hear about it. So if you had any breakthroughs, you can, of course, tag me, share it on social media, share the visual of this podcast and share your breakthroughs with me. I would love to hear from you. And if you want to dive deeper into all that and learn about the seven principles of money and my spiritual approach to money so that you can always shift your perspective on what money really is and understand the energy of money, then join my masterclass next Tuesday. We are going to have so much fun. I'm really, really excited to be teaching about this. Much love and I'll see you very, very soon.